where Christ is all in all, where there's no, no carnal mind, no enmity, no opposition, just God. Yes. But there's a process you have to go through. You have to know and go into the scriptures. And, and as it says in um, 1 Peter 1, 3 and 4, where it talks about he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Y'all got that? And so it's a journey. It's a process. I know I know. Uh, finished work people, most holy place people, uh, third day people don't believe in process. So I coined another term. How about maturation? Yes. Yes. So you don't like process? Well, you have to believe in process because well, that's yeah. where everybody began. Everybody began in Passover. Yeah, well, so you have to believe in that. You have to embrace every part of the makeup of Christ. You can't get away from that. But yes, you should grow on and go on to perfection. Every human being has to experience Passover. Yeah. So everyone, although Christ died for everyone, everyone are, is not saved. Christ died for everybody, but everyone isn't saved. Come on. He made it available to everybody. I mean, for everybody. He died in, uh, 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 let's see, he died a long time ago. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what the but but he died some time ago, two, over 2,000 years ago. And it took me till 1990, uh, April the 29th. But it was still available. Yes. But I had to reckon it so. I had to be awakened to that reality. And the Spirit of God dealt with me and brought me into that process. Same thing. Every every human being have to go through that process. Yep. Y'all got that? Now go to, go with me. I'm going to show you something prophetically. Exodus 34. Well, but we want to show you how to take advantage of your new birth. And that's what it's really about. New creation and new birth. Amen. Got it? Exodus 34, verse 21. Hey, law, this is what Moses was given from the Lord to share with the people, natural Israel. He said, when you get into the promised land, these things are supposed to take place in the promised land. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day thou shall rest. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The seventh day is the Sabbath day. We know that the Sabbath day is the day of the Lord, the day of rest. You got that? Yeah. So rest is always connected to the feast. You do your own study. You always find rest is connected to the feast. And all the feasts, it says, you should do no servile work. Yeah. It, it, then it speaks on that your soul should rest. So when you begin to understand Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles, it brings you to a rest. Yeah. It says, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest, and then it says, what, in earring time and in harvest thou shalt rest. What's your translation say? Plowing time. In plowing, exactly. In plowing and in harvest thou shalt rest. Man, if that don't make you want to be wow. Amen. Amen. Plowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping, you should rest. Come on. So you can tell when the Lord is bringing something extra to you because you can rest in plowing and in reaping. They look alike to you. Boy, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to bring it down home. You, you get what I'm saying? In plowing, in sowing, and in reaping, there is rest. Yeah. No fight. Yeah. Right. No shock. Oh, Come, on. Come on now. No pulling down. Wow. No sweat. No sweat. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So I, Jesus told him in Malachi, I mean Matthew 11, 28 to 30, said, he was talking to religious people. He said, what? What did he tell them? He said, told them about you or what? Matthew 11, 28 to 30, y'all. Go there. It ain't in my notes, but I just stuck decided to throw this in there. Now, 28. Go ahead. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Verse 28. Last part. What it says. Last part 28. Connect to rest. I give. You rest. You need to underline that. He said, and that's what happened at Passover. He gave us rest. It, nothing you had to do. It was a gift to you. You got that? Verse 29. 
What does verse 29 say? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Oh, hold on. Is that, hold on. He gave us rest. Uh -huh. But he said if you take it get, upon you. Yeah. He gave it, but you have to take it upon you. So if you get yoked with me, uh -huh. that's what he said. Yeah. You're gonna learn something yeah. about what I gave you. Uh -huh. And what I gave you is only a part of it. Yeah. Huh? It was made available to you. Uh -huh. See, how many know that some of us know what the scriptures say? We can quote scriptures. Oh, yeah. right. That's what he gave us. Uh -huh. yeah. But when we get yoked with God, uh -huh. and we let his mind become our mind, uh -huh. his thoughts become our thoughts, uh -huh. his yeah. ways become our ways, yeah. then we find rest uh -huh. for our souls. Wow. Yeah. Some of us only, we're Bible thumpers. Uh -huh. yeah. We know what scriptures mean. We know the Bible, yeah. right. but we're not equally yoked with him. Yeah. You got it? So when you take his yoke upon you, then all of a sudden, the rest he gave, you find. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. What did I say? Behind every scripture, there's a mystery that is waiting to be revealed. Oh, yeah. That's good. Y'all got that? Yeah. So go back to uh, Exodus. I just want to throw it in. I could have stayed over there in 30 and go for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, I can talk about the yoke is easy and the burden is light. And that's connected to Revelation. See, it comes through instruction, training, and learning. The yoke is easy. It's easy because I'm not kicking against the pricks. It's easy because I'm submitted to his will. See, then the burden is light. But if I'm still kicking, if I'm still operating under the endemic man, still operating in darkness, then I'm going to kick against them. I'm going to be unequally yoked. If you know anything about how they yoke oxen, they took the weaker and the strongest and yoked them together. And the stronger will pull the weakest. That's why I said, ye that are weak, you that are strong and bear the infirmities of the weak. So that's why we're supposed to be in relationship with each other. I heard the message on yesterday. That's what it was saying. We didn't get, and that was a powerful word. It was. I had to listen to it three times. And I don't even listen to my word three, yes. three times. From Selena Monson. I told her I have to do it again. I told her I should have to do it again. It was, man, that one was right on. Right on. Yeah, I told her I made, made, made Papa happy. I, I, I was sitting there like a, yeah. like a, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I think I was talking to Loretta. I told Loretta there over the phone. I said, Loretta, man, I'm just so excited. Yeah. My babies are growing up. Come on. Get it out. Get back to the message. Amen. So it's plowing and reaping shall be rest. Oh, I, oh, I, I just want to go over there to Isaiah 58. It talks about seeds from your own ways, uh -huh. pleasures, uh -huh. and words. But that 14th verse says that we'll be, oh, we have the heritage of Jacob. We'll ride the high places of the earth. Oh, the heritage of Jacob is a changed nature. Hello, changed nature will cause you yeah. to ride upon the high uh -huh. places of the earth. Oh, but I ain't got time. Uh -huh. 22. 